It's past midnight, but we're still here talking NBA as we go ahead and talk just real quickly about the James Harden trade because the specifics from both Adrian Wojnarowski and then soon after Sham Sharania have come out in regards to the James Harden trade as James Harden is now going to the Los Angeles Clippers officially. Uh, I will say that it was for quite a bit, uh, despite the fact, again, the Clippers were only bidding against themselves and really didn't have to give up all that much because of the ongoing drama for the James Harden saga in Philadelphia. I want to go ahead and mention that James Harden, uh, also as well, of course, P.J. Tucker, and I think Philippe Petrusev also are going to the Los Angeles Clippers right now. It's what I have listed from Agent Wojnarowski. Uh, in return, there is going to be the following uh, as far as the individual players. So it is the Sixers are acquiring Marcus Morris, Nick Batum, Robert Covington, K.J. Martin, and the multiple draft picks and a pick swap for James Harden, P.J. Tucker, and Philip Petrusev. The draft picks involved are the Clippers are sending the Sixers a 2028 unprotected first-round draft pick, two second-round draft picks, and a pick swap, according to ESPN. The Clippers are also routing the 76ers an additional future first-round draft pick from a third team. And here today to discuss this absolutely stupid trade on the part of the Clippers, in my opinion. Good man indeed. It is the magic man, Sean Grice. Sean, great to have you here. Uh, I, I don't get the, what the Clippers are doing. Uh, again, okay, yeah, you got Harden, but you don't have to give that bevy of picks for him. Just throw some contracts, the expiring contracts, and there you go. You didn't have to give up Terrence Mann, your beloved, precious Terrence Mann, okay, you got the chance to go ahead and keep him. Okay, that's great. But so many draft picks, including an unprotected first, another first coming from a third team, a swap, and some seconds. This is just way too much for James Harden right now. Absolutely, absolutely, Gerald. I, I thought the same thing when I when I read the, the completed trade. Um it's it's bizarre world between those these two franchises now way too much for for him especially what's going on i mean nobody else is bidding for him at this point in time absolutely no. nuts what the clippers did absolutely i mean uh, a 2028 unprotected first round pick is going to be uh very high gerald very high um yeah like you said this is a move that that not only that only stinks of desperation. It almost smells like a dead carcass that's trying to reanimate itself. Uh, they've had they've had so much depth um, issues, uh, uh, combined with uh, a myriad of injury problems that just uh, just keep creeping into this franchise. They just can't seem to escape it, Gerald. So they're just tripling down here and. As you said, it's a stupid move. In, in the end, this is a, a very, very short-sighted, um, ill-timed, and desperate move. Uh, to answer Eli's question, I mean, the simple fact is, is that this is now going to be a backcourt of Russell Westbrook and James Harden. That's, that's what the Clippers are betting on. And historically... Let's look at how that has turned out. Um, James Harden was a successful sixth man on the Thunder Gerald, but in the finals he shriveled. He wasn't the player he was. He was he was a skeleton of uh, what he was, and that didn't work out with Russell Westbrook ultimately. Then they reunited in Houston, and we saw how historically that worked out, Gerald. Now it's the third time that Russell Westbrook and James Harden are together in a backcourt. And a little bit of history repeating. I'm not going to go into that song because I'm, I'm not, I don't really like that song, Gerald, but it just popped in my head thinking about those two. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's going to work out at all. I, I agree with you. I think this is, this is planning, planning a picnic 
and you know the rain clouds are coming over the picnic tables. Uh, it, it's confounding. And now you're moving Robert Covington, who, by the way, Gerald very early returns, very early returns, but he was playing well. At After having two miserable seasons. He was playing well for them at the power forward spot and uh, seemed to be rejuvenated. And now he goes back to where it all started for him. Not with, not now, obviously, with Sam Hinkie brought him in, but now Daryl Morey gets him back. Uh, that's kind of ironic and a little nerdy. Uh, da- but hold on, Dante. Um, I hate the Clippers with a passion. They're Joe's second favorite team, by the way. Let's clear that up. They are Joe's second favorite team, not mine. Joe does not speak for me. Uh, Joe is not my dad. Joe is nobody to me when he says stuff like that. I hate the Clippers with the passion. I'm going to say it until the day I day day I die. I hate the Clippers with a passion. These are the Clippers are Joe's. He has clearly said this. Joe has clearly said this on the air, or at least I think he has. Well, maybe he hasn't. I don't know. But let's just go ahead and put this on Joe, anyways, as his second favorite team right there for you. So they are Joe's second favorite team. So Dante, in the future, please. So I don't have to delete any comments from you, my friend, because you're a great part of what we do here at Lakers Fast Break. They are Joe's second favorite team. So not mine. So there you go. All right. There you go. Go ahead, my friend. Yes. Yeah, no, I was just going to say shout out. Love you, Dante. Thank you for yes. uh, being a member of the, the LP fam. And um, thank you, you know, Dante. I, Appreciate it. I uh, love you. Bro. I'm going to I'm going to let Gerald speak Unbeloved. for himself. I've never yeah. I've never once. Yeah. spoken for Gerald Joe does or... not run the world according you know un- unlike Joe says you know I know I understand is you know he's the narcissist Lex Luger revisited but yes he, the Joe does not rev- the world does not revolve around Joe so yes yes yeah now is he now do you consider him more Lex Luger comic book or more Lex Luger wrestler uh Lex Luger uh wrestler the, you know, okay yes yeah terrible work rate all muscles no brains there you go Ooh. Although, you know what? I actually don't want to go ahead and say too much about Lex Luger now because he can barely get out of a wheelchair at this point in time. So let's Abs- not even Ab- go there. Ab- yeah, absolutely. I mean, between football and wrestling, his back is done. You're, here. And you're right, John. He does say weird stuff when he doesn't take his blood pressure meds. But getting back to the uh, trade when it comes to uh, the the specifics. So, fe- yeah. so Gerald, uh, Daryl Morey was explicit in, in what his goal was in trading James, Har- James Harden, right? And we're going to put him up to it because he said it. All-star level player. All-star level player. Did he acquire an all-star level player in this trade, Gerald? Not anymore. Uh, James Harden can give you that maybe once a week, twice a month, three times in in a couple months. But he is no longer the player they once was. And now uh, Kawhi, you're asking Kawhi to still be that all-world defender he once was after two shaky knees. And you're asking PG to be the all-world defender he once was with two shaky knees. And you're asking these guys in the mid-30s that are actually the Clippers have started off well. We'll go ahead and let them know that PG has started off, you know, really, really hot from out from the outside. So I got to give them their 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 you know their their love on that. You know, I got to tell them exactly where that is. So for Joe's second favorite team. But when it comes to – and Rocco, like you said, uh, and that's also been said in the chat, has played starting off this well. I guess maybe it's, it's, he's got an expiring contract, I imagine, because his contract these past couple of years has not favored him too kindly because he's played absolutely miserable the past couple seasons before. But he got some nice returns. And imagine that in the expiring year. What are the odds of that happening? Yeah, it's seem, seemingly fortuitous, Gerald. And again yes. – uh, I, my original question was, did you think, remember, Maury said that his goal was to acquire an all-star level player for James Harden. Yes, that was, and, that was Darren Maury's, and, yes, an all-star, an all-star, but yeah, he failed he in that failed. sense, but he, failed. he may be the end up or whoever his successor will be because if Embiid doesn't like it, because Embiid is obviously the, that's well, the main issue there because while these draft picks are great for the future for Philly, that doesn't help the now for 
Joel Embiid. And by the way, Danny Green was waived as far as part of this deal is concerned on Philadelphia's end. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Need to, need to make that footnote. Uh, I will, uh, Gerald, this is, you know, the 28 pick is a juicy pick, but that's five years down the road. Yeah. I don't see. And I don't know what the third team is that, that they're going to facilitate a trade to get another draft pick, a first round draft pick for Philadelphia on that. I don't know where that's coming from as of yet. Neither do I, because there's nothing in this trade that would substantiate a move to acquire a first round pick for any of those gentlemen. I just think it's a reach. And I, I just think it just does, does not help you enough. I mean, I know that I heard in, you know, in the hours before leading up to this trade that James Harden, maybe we should start looking at him because of our uh, serious lack of consistent guard play. But where does he help you on the defensive end when you need it the most in a playoff the- setting? The ultimate winner of this trade is Tyrese Maxey, Gerald. Of course. He wins out. He's the winner in this trade. And it's maybe not- that will placate and, and, and satisfy enough Joel and B. Because that's the ultimate thing here in this in this trade is, is, is hoping that you have enough that you brought back or hoping that you have a good enough team. As we've seen, they've been playing very well without James Harden. I think that was also a key to this trade is that they've been playing very well without James Harden at all in this mix. They almost won in Milwaukee and they've actually proven themselves over the course of the past few days to be very formidable, formidable, even for a team that we thought was kind of undermanned, but it looked like they're still playing well. Uh, Tyrese Tyrese Maxey could be on the verge of a really being a great player, an all-star level player. That may be enough to placate Joel Embiid, but is that enough to go ahead and advance them far? Because if it isn't, Joel Embiid will start getting that itchy, itchy finger, itchy eyes. The eyes will start wandering, and they'll go ahead and they'll start moving in different directions. Absolutely, Gerald, because Joel Embiid signed his extension, and he's got still a, a fair bit of term on his deal. So he can determine uh, not only uh, his worth, but uh, where his uh, loyalties lie as well. Now, there's, there hasn't really been anything he said differently than what Giannis s- said uh, about his desires to win. The difference is that the Bucks went out and acquired not only an all-star, an all-NBA, uh, all-75-year legendary player to put beside their superstar, Gerald. And... Daryl Morey, I think, went into this trade with the wrong hypothesis. Yeah. He he hypothesized that James Harden is worthy to every other team that he is the Philadelphia 76ers. And that's as Gerald and myself and for God's sakes, anybody else with uh, with 80% of their working brain knows that he was at the tipping point of being an all-star. And as Gerald has said, that's gone. It's 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 gone. There's he there's nothing left. So Ger- Gerald is right. It's a stupid move because there's no juice left there that's worth this squeeze. No matter how much they want to uh uh try and uh um I guess doll it up uh with the media because Gerald there there's there's definitely going to be a lot of manufactured fawning. I feel uh, with uh, some of the NBA media uh, and just uh, talking about how, oh, it was a stupendous move made by the Clippers and so advantageous. And James Harden is going to definitely uh, develop chemistry with uh, the other three individuals. But now you have a case where you have basically three Hall of Famers working together with Paul George and you need them to all coexist and not only coexist and collaborate you need each of them to sacrifice what neither of any four of them have had have been able to sacrifice throughout their entire career and Gerald was right in the end he used the perfect word stupid it was a stupid trade 
Yes, it was a very stupid trade indeed, but we want to hear your thoughts out there always on Lakers Fast Break, wherever you get your social media, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm adding this on to the tail end of our post-game show for those that are listening on audio. Don't forget to, later today, Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. Hopefully everyone will have a happy and safe Halloween. We'll be back later tonight. We will discuss more in detail the thoughts from everybody out there on the James Harden trade. It'll be interesting to see what the reaction worldwide for is again you know i I don't i think it's a lose-lose situation magic man philadelphia didn't get the star that they needed in return that could really help propel them to get into the same atmosphere as philadelphia excuse me as far as as to the heights of milwaukee and boston but I also don't think the Clippers won the trade because a they get hardened but b they gave up a lot for them that they'll pay later on for that's quite for sure a lot of expiring contracts a lot of more draft picks than i had anticipated especially one possibly two first rounders that they could be lining up to give in this case philadelphia and i think that's one or two too many first round draft picks for him yeah I, I, absolutely gerald it it's it was way too much and yeah. um I, I i think not only that gerald you're if you're the clippers if if you wanna if you wanna look kind of into the weeds here, Nicholas Batum served a very uh, fine tuned and apropos purpose for Ty Lue. He could always count on him as a pivot offensively. Whereas when they got in the sludge and the mud, Batum was has the IQ to get, try and get them out of it. Uh, they don't have that anymore. That they have two button, not buttoned down, sh- um, shirts out, untucked, very, very, very um, um, unorthodox uh, fundamentals here. And there's just going to be a lot of fluff eventually down the road. Now, I, I think they'll they'll. They can do pretty well in the regular season. Ty Lue is a very good coach. But I just eventually see this being, like you said, Gerald, a situation that unfolds by a franchise making a dumb, stupid move. It's not bold at all. Uh, Gerald is 100% correct. I don't think so, Nazgul. Uh, As much as the Lord of the Rings might be uh, following around, the Lord of the Rings are the Los Angeles Lakers because uh, the Lakers are clearly a better team than the Clippers. Uh, The odds are still in the Lakers' favor. Just to ask us here in Vegas, as uh, Magic Man said, the numbers are still remote and the odds are still remote that the Clippers are anywhere near uh, a Western Conference title. Uh, I think that when you have so many players that all need the ball, high usage players. Uh, I don't think that they'll be able to play well together. Plus again, Russ, Russell Westbrook, the first time Russell Westbrook uh, doesn't, this didn't work before in Houston when they were together. Why does anyone think that this is going to work again between Westbrook and Harden as a backcourt? Yeah. Especially considering the fact that we're four years down the road as well, Gerald. Yes. Um, you know, look, they, they, they played marvelously together in one game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> against the game. Lakers. Against yes. the Lakers. Yeah, let's the, just count the. Let's just not count the other four that the Lakers waxed them <laughs> when they realized that Russ can't shoot and decided to go ahead and, you know, that was the game plan. Let him shoot from the outside, and the Lakers won easily in four games to one. So, what happened yep. there? In school? Do Do you remember that one? Yeah. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Oh, but you're gonna say it's a bubble championship. That's all. Yeah. Come yeah. Back. Yeah, oh, four, say, four, yeah, four year, four years, four years down the road, and there's no such thing as fairy dust. So me and Gerald yeah. are in agreement once again. Um, savants think alike. It's just a very, very smelly, desperate move. And look, if if you're so, it concerned, doesn't make your team that much better. And no. again, all the all the draft picks that you're giving up and all the expired cash that you could have used for this summer or this upcoming summer when there's a lot of teams that are handcuffed because of the salary cap that they put themselves in, like the Suns, uh, like the Warriors, uh, several other teams, Milwaukee, Boston, all these teams cannot do anything really that much next summer. 
Whereas a team that's going to have a ton of cap space like Philadelphia is going to be able to go ahead and dictate either through trade or free agency and build up from there. So Joel Embiid, he may not be happiest now about what's going on with the trade or maybe just happy that Joel, that uh, James Harden is gone. But this time, if you know Daryl gets another crack at it or a competent GM gets a crack at it with all that cap space coming up in the near future, my friend, either, or even at the February trade deadline, things could look a lot better for them as well. Absolutely, Gerald. Absolutely. And by the way, this was um, uh, the big, I think the Excuse big me, difference. Oswald, who's won more titles? How many, how many world championships have the Clippers won? Uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Still waiting. A donut. That's right. Donut. Uh, Lakers have won 17. That's right. Yes. Who's won the mo- more recently a world championship? The Lakers or Clippers? Uh, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for the answer. Oh, you you can have all the regular season games that you want. Who's got the who's got the Larry O'Brien trophies sitting there at the UCLA Health Center? Oh, wait, that's the Lakers. I'm so sorry. I apologize. Didn't mean to hurt you, hit you right where it where it hurts the most. But again, it's the Lakers fast break. It is Magic Man Sean Grice and me, Gerald Glasser. Thanks again, even to you, Nazgul, for watching and listening. Truly appreciate it. Eric Kwan says, I mean, it looks better for Philly that they have money to spend with Tobias Harris expiring contract and the other guys off the books. Yes, Eric, that's again, Philadelphia, you know, he didn't get a all-star, but he got several draft picks and he's got a lot of money that's going to come off the books or that he could use and facilitate in a trade in February, as early as February, if he wants to, the trade deadline. So Again, while it didn't look as good on paper, and I said maybe even a lose-lose, the more I'm talking about it, my friend, the more it may not be so bad for Philadelphia as all it works out. Again, it's what you do with all that cash that you're going to have and those draft picks that makes it count. Absolutely. Uh, Nazgul says stop living in the past. Stop living in the past. Well, you know what? The, you can't live in the past, Nazgul, and you can't because you have no fond memories to think of when you're as a Clippers fan. Let's just put it that way. And and the past, like, what do you define as the past? That, the past. Yeah, yeah. Like, what's the past? The 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 fifties when we won all of them. The seventies when we won. Twenty twenty when we beat when we won. Yeah. Which what what are you talking about? Who controls the past now? Controls the future. George mm-hmm. Orwell. George Who was in Orwell, the Western Conference Mads- Finals last year. I don't see the Clippers. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, I see. Once again, your guys getting injured when you need them the most, and then there you go. But yeah, yeah. we'll see. You've got you've got a team now that's really. I know the Lakers a couple of years ago. We everybody was laughing, including us, about how geriatric that team was. This team, I I don't know if it's older, but it sure seems like it. This team is like an All Star team from 2012. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Very good point, Joe. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And they're asking, they're asking a player who's not over the hill, uh, but not what he once was either, to parachute onto a plane that the wheels are already up on, and you need to land in the exact correct spot. That's how slim their chances are. That's how slim they are. So slim that they're remote. And uh, 2012, wow. Uh, again, Gerald. I should be I, nice, I, Magic Man. Maybe uh, 2014 All Star. Sure, team. sure. Okay, 14's better. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you weren't far off. 2012 would be right in the wheelhouse as well. I mean, that uh, was a championship level team it, nine it years ago. Now it it's should, just a team. Yes, absolutely. And it should be. It should be stated, uh, Gerald, that when Nurse was on the opposite end of this, um, you know, he took. Uh, all those lemons have made lemonade. So if any coach I think could, could take lemons and make lemonade out of the situation, it's him. Um, he's unorthodox. Um, he's a little off the wall. Uh, however, a lot of guys like playing for Nick nurse and it was uh, Gerald that had to be incumbent for Daryl Moore to make this move sooner rather than later for two reasons one he just hired nurse nurse is coming into this locker room and he's trying to get a feel and a vibe for what's going on and he doesn't need harden coming up the works gerald 
And I know a lot of people had issues with the fact that, well, that clause existed in the in the contract where it said that if he if he didn't report that he could be with his services could be withheld by the 76ers in perpetuity. But the fact is, while he showed up a day late, he still showed up. And that clause then became nonplus because it didn't matter anymore. And he was left off the team plane and off away from the team activities for a very important reason, Drew. His presence would not have lended itself to anything positive. I understand what Mr. Soro has said about him not liking what the Philadelphia 76ers did to him. But the fact remains is that there was nothing positive that would have happened had James Harden been around the team. We'll see. We'll see and, what happens, and, my friend. Absolutely. And and the second and the second reason is very is also very simple, Joe. That unlike the situation with Ben Simmons, Maury didn't have any leverage. Ben Sim- Ben Simmons was at that point coming off two pretty good seasons. However, we know the story behind him became a shell of himself. But ultimately, in that situation, what the Symphony Sexers were able to do is leverage a situation in their favor. And this time around, Harden had the leverage, not the Sixers. Yeah. And I think that's where that's where Maury kind of had to blink at the poker table because James Harden wasn't ready to bluff. He was serious. Again, uh, James Harden, excuse me, uh, when it comes to what the Philadelphia 76ers, Daryl Morey may never ever see the fruits of the labor for this trade, but it, it, again, it all depends on what happens down the road for that, those draft picks. Uh, and then again, what he does with all the extra cash that now he got for all those expirings, because they, they, his team did not get any better today by the trade that they made. And with the Clippers, maybe marginally better at best, but still defensive perimeter, they're older they're slower. Uh, they're, you know, James Harden has proven he's not available to in the clutch when you need him the most in the playoffs. He's re- failed time in and time out. And still you have a health issue between them. I mean, people talk about LeBron and AD. Clippers fans could never talk about LeBron and AD in streak lows when it compares to what we've seen with Kawhi, often injured, and PG. So, yeah, I mean, again, we both ha- can't talk as far as health is concerned because we both have issues there. So uh, just say this, right? Diana, Clippers got marginally better at best, and that's still not enough to beat the Lakers, the Nuggets, or any of the top teams in the Western Conference right now. Not at all. Not at all, Gerald. And um, Oscar, let me put it. You said his his comment, you all really think old man LeBron and soft AD will win another chip in LA? Well, let me put it like this. Do you think that uh, broken Kawhi, and old PG win another chip, win a chip in LA. This is it's that simple because they haven't won one yet. This promise, no. this guarantee that the Clippers were going to get when they originally traded for those two, uh, that's never come to fruition. And in the loaded up Western Conference, they still look like you know a team that's not going to be able to get quite there. So at least not what yeah. they have right now. Yeah, not at all, Gerald. And uh, let's let's take a look at the uh, likely the five. Uh, upcoming game non clutch Harden that the Clippers would be playing. He likely makes his debut Monday, November 6th, when the Clippers are in Madison Square. Provided Garden, he Europe. gets out of the clubs, correct. Uh, Wednesday night, the Nets, Friday, the Mavericks, Sunday, the Grizzlies, Tuesday, the Nuggets. That's a tough five game stretch to introduce uh, a guy who's been at the clubs all summer uh and despite what what has been said uh is not in a con- i'm asking you the question now school you asked me the question i give the question right back to you if you, that's what you think about the the lakers that's what i think about the clippers okay i mean he's not he's not he wasn't in any and the position. lakers have one chip to prove it with that with lebron and ad hey look your guys don't yeah they have zero Zero. zero, zero, zero. I mean, you might as well put a zero next to PG and Kawhi because that's what it amounts to. Zero. You're going to say Kawhi won a chip with another team. 
he didn't win with the Clippers. Yeah, man. LeBron and AD won it together on the Lakers. And need I say more? You're just throwing a tennis ball at a brick wall, man. Yeah. Eventually, it's just going to hit you in the face. Yeah, Clippers zero. Lakers 17. Yeah. That's right there. Sorry. Again, uh, and this isn't going to help you very much. Harden, Harden coming to the Clippers is definitely not going to be something. You now have probably the oldest. Well, no, actually, you might not because you trade away a lot of age. But you did get, you know, P.J. Walker, who's ancient. And you got James Harden, who acts like he's ancient. So there you go. Thank God there's no expansion team yet in Vegas or he'd really be in trouble. But we'll wait and see. But once again, James Harden is now a Clipper. We want to thank even Nazgul for joining us. All the Clippers fans that join us because they don't have a show of their own, which tells you when you win, don't win championships, I guess you don't have to show your own. Uh, but really appreciate everybody new that was also in the chat. If you get a chance, please like and subscribe to get the latest notifications on when we go live on the air with the latest Sacred Fast Break. Uh, happy and safe Halloween to everyone. We'll see Jonathan, who's a Clippers fan, Nazgul, uh, Xiao, uh, J.E., Eli, who just went to sleep. He's a Phoenix fan. So, you know, wishing everyone a safe and happy Halloween. All uh, sports kidding aside, really, truly wish you both, uh, everyone out there, a happy and safe Halloween. Uh, we'll be back later tonight uh, talking more about the James Harden trade, what's going on in the NBA and a preview of the Lakers and, and uh, undermanned Clippers because we don't expect uh, James Hard to be ready for that game. But you know, we never know. He might feel up to it, depending on when he gets out of the clubs indeed. So for Magic Man, Sean Grice, it's me, Gerald Glassford. Thanks so much for watching this thing. We'll see you later today. Happy Halloween. Let's hope you get all the treats. In the case of the Clippers, they probably got a trick. Unfortunately, they did get tricked with the James Harden trade right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.